Welcome back. This is Jess, and in this video, I'd like to go over how to create a classroom, navigate the dashboard, and assign students to personalized curriculum paths. As usual, we're starting on the home page of the Wowzers dashboard, and this is the first screen you see when you log in. To create a new classroom, click the Classroom tab on the left. This takes you to a list of all of your classrooms. To create a new one, click the plus button. Go ahead and choose the school the classroom is in, choose a teacher, give it a name, select the grade level, and then just click the Create Classroom button. Next, you're given a series of options to customize your classroom. Much of this work is typically done by the Wowzers support team when they set up your account, but feel free to experiment with it. This first option allows you to assign all students to a pre-assessment before jumping into the curriculum. This is really helpful to see what concepts they might need extra work on, plus you can compare their results to assessments throughout the year to check on their progress. This next option allows you to choose whether students should automatically be given a remediation video if they're struggling on the daily practice questions. This is on by default as it's an important part of the adaptive nature of Wowzers, but you can turn it off if you like. Here, you can choose what happens when a student gets all the questions correct in the tryout portion at the beginning of each day of curriculum. When this happens, it suggests that the student already has a firm grasp of the day's concept, so we recommend that students skip the lesson and go immediately to the practice if this happens. But you can choose whether you'd prefer them to always do the lesson regardless or skip to a different part of the day's curriculum. In the free time options, you can change how long students spend exploring the mall and spending the virtual coins they've earned after they complete a day of curriculum. We recommend giving them around five to 10 minutes in this portion, but you can adjust this. Next, you can choose if you want students to have the option to practice test questions, usually in preparation of a high stakes assessment. When turned on, students will just see a menu upon logging in that gives them two options, either test prep or next activity to continue the curriculum. Lastly, we provide some options if you're having any performance issues with Wowzers. We don't recommend turning either of these options on unless you experience issues, so we'll leave them off for now. Now it's time to actually add students to the classroom. You can add each one manually by filling out each row and then clicking Add Student, but it's usually easier to automatically import a list of students and let Wowzers do the work for you. To do that, we include a couple templates over here and you can download them and fill them in using something like Excel. Uh, let me go ahead and open up a spreadsheet that I've already created. A few things to keep in mind when creating a spreadsheet like this. It's best to keep the username column blank so that you don't accidentally assign a username that already exists in Wowzers. A unique username will automatically be created for each student, and it's typically their first name, last initial, followed by a number. Keep in mind that the computer-generated passwords can be difficult for students to remember, so you might want to create simple six-character passwords for the students. To import this classroom list, just click the Select a File to Add button, locate the spreadsheet, and then click Open. When you're done, just be sure to click Save Changes at the bottom. At this point, we highly recommend downloading a PDF of your students' usernames and passwords so you have a record of them. Then you just provide this info to each student. Save it somewhere that you can refer back to in case one of your students forgets their info. And then all that's left now is for each student to log in using these credentials and jump into the curriculum. Let's go ahead and switch over now to an existing classroom that's been using Wowzers for a while to see what the classroom dashboard looks like. Here you can see each student's avatar, the content that they're currently working on, and their overall score for each section you're currently looking at. At the top here, you can see that we're currently looking at sixth grade, sections one, two, three, and so on. To skip to a different part of the curriculum, just use this drop down menu. This is a great place to get a quick snapshot of where each student is and how they're doing. Later on in this video series, we'll go into more detail on this page and how to use it. Next up, let's check out the Path tab. This is where you go to create personalized paths through the curriculum for your students. 
By default, they start at the beginning of their grade on section one, then go to section two, three, and so on through the entire grade. However, this can be changed for your whole classroom or for small groups of students or even for individual students. To edit this path, just click the edit button. Now you can drag the sections into a different order, turn certain sections off so that the students completely skip over them, or open up a section and turn off individual days or even individual activities. If you want to turn off all the activities of a certain type, for example, if you don't want your students to receive the quest part of each day, click this button at the top and choose which activities are enabled or disabled. If you want to add additional sections to the path, for example, from a different grade, click the Add New Sections button. From here, you can browse through the curriculum and drag over any other sections or assessments you want students to encounter. When you're done, don't forget to click the Save Changes button. As a last step, you can choose whether students currently on this path should start over from the beginning of the path or stay where they are. Now, I'd like to show you one more tool possible with this path system. Let's go back to the Dashboard tab. You can see that this first student is working on the 12th section of sixth grade, which is inequalities, but I noticed that their score on the first section was quite a bit lower than usual. I'd like to move him back to the first section to give it another try. To do that, just click the checkbox next to the student, click Select Activity, and now you can browse through the curriculum to choose an activity to send them back to. So let's expand this first section he struggled with, and then we'll send him back to the remediation by clicking Move here. This will immediately send him back to this activity in his path. The other option you might have noticed when we click a student is to send them to the next activity in the path. This is useful if they get stuck or are just ready to move on. As the last part of this video, let's quickly take a look at the Reports tab. There are a lot of reports listed here and they're all useful for different situations and use cases. So we'll go over them in depth in another video. For today, just note that this is where all the reports are found. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this look at classroom creation, paths, and the dashboard helpful. See you next time.